Uh, th this just gets weirder and weirder. Weirder and weirder. The attack on white people never seems to end. I mean, when we don't have any more money, or when we're gone, <laughs> when we stop being productive, when the situation's gotten so bad in the West, all Western countries that, you know, white people are marginalized, minority group that have all these restrictions and regulations put on them that nobody else has and all these controls and it's virtually impossible for them to make a good living anymore, Th then they'll stop uh, vilifying us, right? <laughs> all right, so listen to this. German Parenting Magazine warns that blonde and cheerful families are dangerous. This is a true story. <laughs> Wait a second. Aren't there blonde and blue-haired people in Germany? <laughs> so, of course, German uh, magazine. Uh, for, for those of you who don't know, uh, Hitler was very big about blonde hair, blue-eyed people, which is interesting because he had uh, dark hair and dark eyes because, you know, Hitler hated himself. <laughs> so anything that yeah, he, he liked the exact opposite, right? So the most common is brown hair, brown eyes, so he hated that. Hated himself, like the exact opposite, the most rare, which is blonde hair, blue eyes. And so he favored Germans who had that. And I guess the majority of Nazis were blonde hair, blue eyed people. Certainly that was considered the, 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 the best race, the, the best example of whites. So of course the Germans with their self-hating guilt, have decided to bash blonde hair, blue-eyed people. Yes, because, you know, they're, they're socialists, these people, right? Anybody saying something stupid like this is a socialist. Well, <laughs> you're blonde hair and blue-eyed. So you have a collective guilt. There's a collective guilt attaching you to the blonde hair, blue-eyed people. Well, well, you're white, too. Yeah, but I'm not blonde hair and blue-eyed. <laughs> okay. Boy, this identity politics really creates a lot of schisms. You, you can just continue, continue dividing people into ever more fragmented groups. It'll never end. <sighs> all right, so apparently German language publications have now begun to openly denounce the very concept of all white families as some sort of danger to the multicultural Marxist state. Well, yeah, because... White people are very productive. They do very well. They don't need a lot of help from the state. They don't generally need the state, period. Yeah, that's a threat. Because the state, as it exists now, only exists because of voters who vote it, the people within the state, running the state, in the office. <laughs> white people don't vote for people generally. So, I mean, you know, a lot of white people have changed their tune on this because they have become indoctrinated. But there's still plenty of white people who have right leaning sympathies who are more conservative who will not vote for socialism at all. They don't need it. They can create their own quality lives. They don't need the state to take care of them. Well, for the state to get more power, they need ever more people who the state needs to take care of them, thereby empowering the state to take care of them more. The more people need to be taken care of by the state, the more powerful the state becomes. And it's the nature of government to want to accrue ever more power. <sighs> Going so far as to claim that proper diverse parents should always be on the lookout for blonde and cheerful families due to their propensity for right-wing politics and sense of racial identity? This sounds like Jordan Peterson talking. Are you sure Jordan Peterson didn't write this? I know a lot of you out there are fans of Jordan. You think he's some great guy. He's not a conservative, okay? He, he's a radical leftist, okay? In fact, he, he's, he's very much, well, I don't know about radical, okay? Uh, he's a leftist, all right? Uh, you could say he's radical in his views, but not in his actions, okay? So Jordan Peterson tries to portray himself as more centrist or even somewhat leaning right but he talks about a very limited number of things. Uh, his real view, though, is that the left is correct. They're just going too far with their radicalism in the form of their actions, right? Whacking people over the head with bike locks, you know, beating people up who are wearing MAGA hats. That's not good. You need to stop that left, because if you don't stop that, the real threat, which isn't you, of course, in your radicalism. Oh, no. The real threat, which is white people who have discovered their racial identity as white people will, will collectivize and rise up, and they're the real threat. That's what he believes. If you've listened to any of his content, you know this. He believes in white privilege. 
He's very much for white guilt, collective guilt. He's a leftist. He used to work for the UN. <laughs> Come on. So listen to this. And this filth is actually contained inside a magazine appealing to current and prospective mothers and fathers with the ramifications of such an idea likely to include a higher degree of future race mixing. Feminist, that's because they want to get rid of white people, right? When they talk about equality, they mean getting rid of whites, okay? Because the other races can't compete on a level playing field except maybe Asian people who they don't talk about because it proves the whole bullshit about systematic oppression wrong <laughs> in terms of oppressor, oppressed, minority groups, majority groups, because there's even less of them in America than black people, and they do better than whites. Anyway, so feminist abuse of little white children, the further dearth of human babies in a nation with one of the lowest birth rates in the entire world. Yeah, right. Which is how they've tried to justify bringing in all these black people from Somalia and Muslims from the Middle East. It never occurred to them that, uh, hey, once your population, population dips to a certain amount, people start having babies again. See, see, see here's how uh, uh, um, it works when your population is dropping. Uh, so what happens is that, yeah, your population drops. And what happens is as your population drops, so too does the demand for goods and services. Hence, there's not as great a need locally, domestically, for goods and services, okay? But at the same time, this frees up a lot of goods and services, mostly goods, to be exported to other countries. So really, you'll have more goods to export, less people, which means higher demand, right, for the jobs that exist because there's less people now to do them, and hence those jobs will pay more. Men will start making more, women will start making more, jobs will start paying so much that people will start to be able to afford to have families again. Pay will get so high that men will be able to go up to work and women will be able to stay home because finally, finally, it's gotten back to a point where you can have a traditional family again. Oh no, we don't want that! <laughs> the left does not want that, okay? Traditional families, eh-eh. Got to go the way of the fucking dodo, right? So as the population decreases, eventually labor will become scarce enough that it has a high value. And then white people will start to make more money and then have kids again. Okay, and then your population will start to increase again. People think that this decreasing population, oh, ho, 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 we are below replacement rates, that that's some kind of cataclysm no no population can't continue to increase exponentially forever there's gonna it's gonna dip and ebb it's gonna go up and down like a fucking roller coaster okay but you're not gonna depopulate to the point where there's no people again it'll eventually reach a certain point where labor will have so much value that you can uh, white people can afford to have families again <sighs> Oh, sure, it's easy for black and brown people and all of these, you know, so-called refugees to keep popping out kids because the state is giving them all this free money. Meanwhile, white people ain't getting no help, so of course they're not having as many kids. It's just <laughs> mind-boggling to me. That in this embracing of feminism and women going outside of the home and outside of their role as a mother and homemaker to find meaning and fulfillment in their life, these things combined have created this depopulation. But as I said... Women are starting to become disillusioned with the whole feminist thing. Uh, many are. And if you coupled that with a much higher wage for the man, people could live very comfortable lives like they used to in America, say, in the 1950s, where father went out and worked, and the mother stayed home and took care of the kids. And that would be viable again if you just let your population yeah, diminish. It's not the end of the world. And as for these, oh, old people, what are we going to do about the old people who need the young people to subsidize them? Don't these old people have savings? Don't they have kids they can live with? What happened to generations, several generations living in the same home? You see, this push in the West to kick out the parents from the house, this is just another aspect of trying to depopulate white people. Do you really think that it's a coincidence that most other countries in the world 
have many generations living in the same house and that your parents live with you. But for some reason in the West, in the West, it's become common practice to kick your parents out. Hell, put them in a nursing home that costs thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year. No! This is all by design, people. This is all by design. Don't you get it? All by design. I mean, you always hear them talking about, well, what are we going to do about the old people? We need to bring all these low-skill, low-IQ people in to replace the workers that we no longer have to support all of these baby boomers who are now retired. Because if we don't have the workers to pay the taxes and the social security to support them, they'll all die horrible deaths. <laughs> they'll all starve. Now, why? Oh, why, 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 why? Why aren't they living with their kids? Why aren't they living with their kids? Why aren't they living together as a family? I mean, granted, I, I <laughs> my God, if I think back, good Lord, when my parents were still alive, I wouldn't have wanted them living with me. They could have went and lived with my fucking brother. But um, what I'm saying is that if you didn't have these kind of options being pushed, uh, being propagandized, being indoctrinated into people as the preferable, as the new normal, people would find ways that were actually probably better for them, better for their family. I mean, the, the mother would have help, she'd have her grandparents, the child would have yet another generation, even older, to be there to give them wisdom and guidance. But of course, that would create an even stronger, sta more stable family unit, and we can't have that, especially not for white people. Yeah, okay. Unbelievable. <sighs> Parenting magazine Baby and Family has told readers to beware of families who are inconspicuous and cheerful as these are warning signs that indicate they are right-wing and thus dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like it's Jordan Peterson talking here. <laughs> uh, few white people collectivizing in their own best interests. <sighs> All right, the article goes on and on and on. I'm, I'm not going to read anymore. It's, it's trash. Trash. Not worth any more of my time. <laughs> 